Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. Smart Business Moves, Wednesday, June something. Another, 24. 24. 24. Yeah, hump day. Woo! Um, got Liz. Hey, Liz, how are you? Hi, guys. And we've got an awesome guest, guest today. We've got Chris Willett with Alpine Maids out in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. You know. Hola. I've, I've known Chris for a while. Um, he's a foundations alumni. He uh, got into the industry after, uh, you know, he had, he's a, like a petroleum engineer, you know, and how to find oil and get it out of the ground and some, some pretty complicated stuff here. Um, then you picked it up a level and you, I guess you thought this whole house cleaning thing was going to be pretty easy, but you know, <laughs> Having the ability to deal with abstract concepts and complicated things uh, can can actually be very useful in the uh, house cleaning industry as well. Um, a lot of logistics here, so we're going to jump into that. And Chris is going to be sharing with us, you know, how he's, uh, I guess, made changes to his business model to accommodate uh, different uh, size teams and the, the, the pros and cons of that and, and how we did it and how we can do it. But just to make sure I don't mess this up and forget, because once we get rolling here, sometimes we get jammed up on the end. I just want you guys to see what we're going to be doing uh, for the balance of the week. We've got Chris here today. Um, go back a little bit. Karina Neff, Monday, if you missed that, you it's, it's it's really, you know, inspiring. And if there's anybody thinking about getting into the commercial cleaning business and, and how to do it in a big way, go back and look at that. She was awesome. We had Alonzo yesterday and we picked up on our discussion from last week on racism in America, but we got past the, the whys and the hows and started talking about actionable steps and things that we could do as business owners um, to, to, to make a difference. And we actually uh, have some of the material we looked at yesterday and you can download it off of our uh, coronavirus page off of Cleaning Business Today. And I'll show you that at the end. Uh, Bill Gelderman, a friend of ours for, for a long, long time, he uh, has a, a, a business where he does assessments for, uh, for, for a lot of different businesses, but also does a lot of work in the cleaning industry. Uh, the Orion assessment is, is, is a big one that they do. Um, that helps you identify candidates for hire. If they have any uh, tendencies to steal or, or, or not follow directions or not be safe or maybe use drugs. And it's a, or be late. I think or, that's a big one. A lot of people care about attendance. Oh yeah. Yeah. And these just aren't questions that somebody just, just made up. I mean, it's easy to make up a test, but Everything that Bill does has been analyzed from a from a statistic standpoint, and it has been normalized. And um, no, that's important too because if you're using assessments to hire people, and if you're just making up questions and making you know, you can you can get in trouble with it from an EEOC standpoint if if you're your questions haven't uh, been vetted and in, in st statistically proven not to be biased and, 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 and to be efficacious. Uh, all the stuff that Bill does is, is, is that arena. And, and Liz, uh, this is Bill Gelderman is, is basically who, who, who got you into the uh, disc assessment business, isn't he? Absolutely. Yep. Bill, Bill's my man right there. He's my mentor as far as disc. And I, you know, I, his information just is, he, he's a well of information. Uh, a lot of times, it, it hasn't been that long since I contacted him and said, hey, Bill, can you look at this assessment for me? It looks really wonky. What's up with this? And it didn't look wonky to him. He understood exactly why it was the way that it was. And like, oh, okay, I got it. That makes perfect sense. So he's amazing. Liz has, has worked with Bill for, for a number of years, basically refining her craft on, on disc assessments. But Bill is amazing. The, the, the information that, that, that he can, can, can glean from a, from a disc assessment will make your head spin. So that's going to be fun. And what are we doing Friday, Liz? We have a surprise guest on Friday. Oh, let me see. What did I have for a... For a clue, let me go find it. 
we're going to be doing on the spot. Uh, that's our rapid fire question and answer where uh, Liz, myself, and our special guest each get one minute apiece to answer your hardest questions pertaining to how to run a house cleaning business or anything else for that matter. We can kind of go wherever we want to go with it, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So, All right. My, my clue today is, is a little bit telling. I think some people should be able to get it off of this. So she started her business as a single mom and she grew her company to over two and a half million dollars. She's somebody you might want to listen to. You might want to ask a few questions of. All right. Oh, hey, Leslie. I see that some of you guys are watching. Hey, Debbie, I can see you uh, make a comment, but I can't see you on my phone because I think you're logging in through uh, Modern Cleaning. So, hi. When you all see me waving, ah, it's because I can't, I can't say anything to you on my phone. You don't show up. So, yeah. Uh, let's, let's get to it. I'm, I'm excited for this conversation. So, Liz, start us off here. Where where do we want to go with this? All right. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I wanted Chris to be on here. Uh, I think I told you guys a little bit yesterday about how I've been doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with him. He's in the Mastermind Accountability Group. He's in our success group. And one of the things about Chris is <laughs> when he decides he's going to do something, dang, he just decides he's going to do it and then he does it. And he decided one day he was going to, and he didn't decide one day, this is how it comes out to us, which is what I'm going to have him explain to us. One day he says, you know, I think I'm going to go solo. And we're like, oh, okay. So we're all thinking, yeah, we're going to talk about this for a few weeks, a month, and then, you know, there'll be a plan. And, you know, it, you know, like maybe in six months, Chris's company will be solo. The next, like two or three days later, he came to our mastermind group and said, yeah, I'm solo. Okay. What do you mean you're solo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my company's solo. Nobody's coming into the office. That is how it happened, Chris. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. Age from the world. So tell, oh us my God. About, tell us a little bit about your business, Chris. Just introduce yourself and how you got into the business and what you guys are doing out there. Yeah, so like Tom said, uh, I used to work in oil and gas. I wasn't an engineer. Uh, so I, I was levels below and with the geologists. Um, but when uh, yeah, it's a it's an unstable industry, and it, it didn't seem like a good long term solution. Um, and I wanted to do something else. I know how to clean houses and started started looking at house cleaning. Actually, uh, Rohan's post is what got me interested in the first place. And Liz, like you said, when I see something, I just do it. And here I am. Uh, <laughs> I think we were, um, you know, pre-COVID, we were at about 23 techs. Um, Post-COVID, we're at um, 17 right now. Um, and a lot of that is just because of efficiencies that that we've worked out going so well. Um, we are we're a little you know eighteen or nineteen would would feel better, but um, we're okay at seventeen right now. When you say efficiency, yeah, well, you know, say that. I, I hear the word efficiency used a lot of different ways. How, how what does that mean in your business? Yeah, so for me that means you know how much can you clean in a day. And uh, maybe a team of two people could do um, 12 hours of cleaning in a day and two solo cleaners um, we found can do about 14 hours of cleaning in a day. So more of their days spent cleaning rather looking out of a windshield. Exactly. So that, that means more money for you. Does it mean more money for them? Yeah, we pay on commission, so it, it definitely does. You know, especially if they can get into a routine and they take ownership of the homes that they're cleaning. There's something about being solo that not only cuts down, and you know, they're not coming to the office every day, so that cuts out some drive time. But they can just clean a house faster, um, maybe not faster, but more efficiently, right? You know, if it takes two people an hour and a half, it might take one person 
two and a half hours or two forty five. They can just get out of homes a little bit quicker. Huh. Oh, I think I think people might argue that point until they think about like trying to put three people in a house and they're like, oh, that it takes them so much longer or yeah. right or four people in a house. Yeah. Oh, it takes them yeah. so much longer. Well, but time it's time way too. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. No, I'm just just kind of thinking, you know, there's some things like making a bed and two people working as a team making a bed can do it in fewer steps and it takes from a a work design standpoint, it's more faster than one person making a bed and walking back and forth from from, from side to side. So there's certain work elements where two people arguably can can be more efficient, more productive than than, than one person. True. Why, why do you why do you think though that that overall you're finding a solo is more productive? They can the the, the drive time I get, but just the amount of time in a home, the the, the labor hours to clean a home, is less with one person than two in your experience. Why why do you think that is? Yeah, that was actually a really good clarification you just made because we're not totally solo. Say we have a larger home that has five bedrooms, we'll send two people to meet at that house and tackle it together because they do need to make beds together. Um, maybe they'll clean the kitchen together, or just not run out of energy is the big, the big thing, right? If it's a five, six, seven hour clean. Um, so we, we, you know, when I say solo, we're, it's really more of a hybrid system. We might send one tech, um, about four hours is the cutoff point that I've found um where you can send one person so if we send one person they clean a house for four hours it's typically going to be faster than if we had sent two people to that house you go over four hours we want to send two people or maybe three but we have that flexibility as well with every individual cleaner being their own team um that we can plan for the home better than if we had a two-person team. If I need to send four people, I just send four solos. If I have two two-person teams and I need three people, we run into more inefficiencies. Um, yeah. So maybe it's a planning perspective uh, or a planning efficiency. Like we can better plan on what how we want to tackle a house. I, I think that what we're looking at all the comments here. I've used solos for 20 years, Leslie says, and it's spot on. Ekaterina says, her and her retired military husband work as a team and three houses are the max that they can clean. And this is from the owner's perspective, right? Yeah. So uh, if the owners can't do it because it's such a physical job, then it's giving you kind of an insight into how it's going to be for the people that we're hiring. And Marlo is saying that she does, um, she quickly changed to solos in 87. Everybody kept telling me, telling, telling her she was doing it wrong. Now she sees so many people changing. I love that to solos. That's awesome. Yay. I love when you get props, right? Uh, Debbie says that she has both solos and teams of two. Solos spend less time. A dab factor. Yeah, could be, right? Sarah's on here. I don't know. Can you see the comments? Chris, did you see Sarah says hi? I'm in live. Okay. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and Robin, Robin wants to know, why do you think a team works slower than a solo, Chris? What do you think? Well, I mean, like Tom brought up a really good point. Um, I, I think teams just work slower in small houses, right? If you're in a apartment and you have three people in there, you're going to have two people in the same room. They're going to have difficulty splitting up the job. You need somebody to check all of the work. Um, I, I think there's just a lot of room for people to bump into each other. Um, well, I'll tell you this, having run large teams for many, many, many years is it is a lot harder to run teams. It takes a ton more training. Uh, the jobs have to be really more precisely um, organized. Our, our teams could, could make the same time regardless of size, team of one, team of four, didn't matter. But you know how much work it takes to get teams to be able to do that is so hard. I mean, yeah. it seems like, like, and solos can go faster than, yeah. than what is, right? So if you're like, 
this is the average amount of time. You can't go over this no matter what size team you are. All the teams can make that. It can be one single factor. You, <laughs> what you're saying, Liz, is you have to train people to work together as a team. Just taking yeah. two or three cleaning professionals, even though they all might know how to clean themselves and throwing them together and telling them to go out and clean the home. They're going to be, there's going to be a lot of inefficiency. And I've seen our time cut down as well. Um, you know, there are, there are times where we had people in training for three, maybe even four weeks. And, you know, the max is going to be 10 days now. Do you yeah, super nice. Yeah. Well, you got some questions here, Chris. Um, do you lose the company team spirit by running solos? What have you found there? Yeah, so one thing um, you do, um, you know, who you hire is really important. When we were going into this, we started hiring for solos um, a couple of months before we made the full switch. So our job ad was geared toward it and everybody was brought into the company knowing that the plan was to quit coming to the office at some point. Um, the other thing that we do is our trainers come to the office every single day. Um, I've found them to be a really, we can put a lot of weight on them and a lot of responsibility and they help tremendously. And so by keeping them close and having them out in the field, um, they, they help to spread our culture and our initiatives um, outward from the office. So that's, that is one um, kind of caveat to our solo model is that our trainers come every day. All right. And so do, do your trainers contribute to the culture of the company of your team spirit? Do they go out to the teams even after they're trained or how, how does that work, Chris? Yeah, we use them. I mean, they help a lot. Um, another thing that we might run into is end of the day help. Um, I might have one team scheduled for eight hours of cleaning. Um, we keep our trainer schedule pretty light so that they're typically the ones going out and helping other crews at the end of the day. And that allows them to interact with everybody, check in, make sure that everybody's doing well. And we have a weekly meeting with them that's really just a, a pulse check on, on the company and how everybody's doing. So if I'm a cleaning technician, if I'm a cleaning professional working as a solo, how many times a week would I interact or personally see a trainer? Um, one, usually one. Okay. Yeah. And when I'm when I'm doing that, the trainer, I guess, is going out and meeting them at a home with their cleaning. Yeah. And the trainer is there for what? What? What's their What's their goal in, in going out and meeting with them? Um, the clock by five five thirty, so that they're not you know, stuck in a client's house till 7 p.m. And so there's help in pulling them out of a job because they're running behind. And so they're kind of saviors too, which which helps. I was wondering, do they also help with the logistics, getting supplies and cleaning products to the solos? Um, not yet. And that's, that's we, we're really about 75% of the way through this transition and we have a little bit further to go. So the next step is going to be to introduce a field manager um, who takes some of this um, of what we the trainers do right now um, and drop off supplies, um, deal with any key issues and check in with the techs. Um, and in the future, hopefully start delivering things like annual reviews and just really taking care of a lot of the um the hr element like can i back you up just a little bit chris yeah do you mind like go back to the beginning like like what was your process for your your strategy what were you thinking how did you determine that yeah. solos are going to be best and like walk us through that yeah you know somewhere along the line i started um i, I fell into seeing what somebody else did really successfully and saying, hey, that's probably the model that I should go for. And I started a company with an office, a really expensive one, and teams and uh, almost bought a bunch of company cars. I see somebody was asking about that. Oh, fortunately, I didn't. And um, at some point, I realized I was really going against my personality and that I, um, I love all of our techs. Um, 
they're, I love them as people. They're great employees. They do a lot for me. But I really just don't want to hang out with them every day. Um, I'm I'm better off in a in a basement. Liv knows this. Um, yeah, you know, you put me in the basement with maybe like one one window and just leave me there. That's that's where I'll thrive. And so I, I've just really gone against my personality, and it was causing me a lot of stress, and um, it, it was affecting the whole business. I just you know I'm it's not me. So um, I wish I would have done it from the beginning, but I made some mistakes along the way and, and realized that this whole business is going to operate better if I just, um, if I model it to my strengths. Yeah, awesome. And so you're like, okay, so I, I got to change over. I got to switch over to this new model. So from my perspective, it looks like you're like, okay, I'm thinking about solos. Okay, we're solos now. <laughs> so, so like, how how does that actually happen? You're like, okay, you're and, and you're a very strategic guy. I mean, I know people don't know you, but you're very strategic. You think a lot about how things are going to work and next steps and how you're going to roll it out. Like, what was the first thing you did when you decided, okay, I'm going to take? Because you had how many how many technicians at that time? Yeah, twenty twenty three twenty four. Yeah, so you didn't just call everybody and say, hey, guys, don't come to the office tomorrow. You're driving yourself to your job. Well, yeah. what, what's the first thing? Yeah, like we've been planting seeds for a long time um, and through the hiring process mostly, um, trying to talk to anybody who had qualms with it because, you know, solo cleaners and cleaners and team cleaners are a totally different type of person, right? The people we're hiring now are more like me. They're more analytical um maybe less social they don't um they don't need you to talk to all day every day um so that, that was the upfront work and then um so you didn't fire people though did you no and we had people quit um because it's a new job they're working for a whole new company now and you know they signed on with old alpine maids and now they're working at new Alpine Maids, and it and it wasn't really a good fit for them. So we had some people go to uh, we had one leave for in home care, one left to be a server. Um, but I, I don't believe one, two, three, four. I, I believe we only lost um, four people in that switch. We actually have a couple people um, who haven't returned from COVID uh, through childcare or whatever that are just kind of on hold. Chris, I just got to point out to you, though, that most people would think that four or five people losing them all at one time is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so that was the cost benefit on this, right? I just had a way, yeah. look, I can drag this change out for six months and we can make a timeline for it. And that's going to take a lot of administrative effort and a lot of explaining and planning and meetings and um, handholding, really, right? Or we can just do it and and take the hit, which is going to be turnover, um, which yeah, you know I'm all too used to. But um, you know, retention has has improved a lot um, recently since we've done this, and I think a lot of it really has to do with who we were hiring before we made the switch. So you're speaking to the hiring and you have to hire different people. Do you find that um, you have to pay these people more? Because it seems like you're going to have to hire maybe a slightly higher caliber of person, people that can think on their own, don't need to be led, pushed, et cetera. Yeah. Or maybe not, maybe not um, led, pushed in the same ways. You have to pay them more? As, you know, yeah. how's, how's that? And that's one of the problems that's popped up is um, – you know, there's a lot more support that are, especially our techs that were not originally solo, um, now have a lot more questions. So I I expect this to die down at some point, but it, it has caused a pretty big admin burden to deal with our techs on a day to day basis and answer their questions that that pour in. Um, yeah. Tell, we, us, tell us about those. Like, what kind of questions? Uh, explain that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, um, usually, like, let's say I go to a house as a team and I pull the mat up where the key is supposed to be and there's no key. Um, 
hey, did you check here? You have somebody to bounce your ideas off of, right? I, I think that that's what a lot that's where this comes from. And so now what we're having, what used to happen is they'd pull up the mat and the other tech would say, uh, maybe there's a lockbox or, hey, try under the statue. And eventually somebody would go, wait a minute, did we see if the door was unlocked? Um, now we're getting a lot of, um, hey, I pulled the mat up, there's no key. So a solo, somebody's wired to be a solo cleaner is a problem, self-sufficient problem solver where some people wired to work in a team, if they don't have that teammate there, they're stumped. Definitely. Um, so Chris, I'm curious, do you think that those, those people are like that more because that's who they are or because they've been preconditioned in a team? Like if you hadn't hired them in a team in the beginning, would you think they'd be okay? Um, that's a tough one to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it is largely who they are. Um, and that's part of the interview process. Um, you know, we give them a couple of situational uh, questions and, and want to see that they can answer that they would try to figure it out on their own or that they would take a certain set of steps. So we look for a much more um, problem solving analytical person who can walk through step by step to solve a situation. Um, and then did you, did you like your application, your interview questions or? How much of them have you re reworked? I mean, is it a different process hiring for solos? Um, yeah, so, you know, we have a really short application. Um, the questions aren't really, it's nothing crazy, um, but we're looking for, can you do something in a logical order? Can you start with a big problem and break it down into steps and get to the end result? And I find that people who would be better in teams will just spit out the end result and people who are better at solo would go through the steps. So wow. you're hiring people for solos that you wouldn't have hired as team members and vice versa? Am I, am I reaching on that? Yeah, no, that's, that's right. Um, when we were hiring for teams, we were looking for, um, People who just require a lot of interaction, a lot of, uh, um, you know, if you're familiar with DISC, high eye, um, and, uh, you know, if you're familiar with DISC, now we're hiring high C. Um, and, yeah. yeah. And the things that hold you back on that high C behavioral style are not really an issue if it's solo because they're, they're going to do a good job. Most of the problems with solo with high Cs are when you team them up with somebody, right? And we do yeah, have that problem, right? So now when we have to tackle a house with two, three, four techs, um, it throws them off because, oh my God, I'm not responsible for just myself. What if somebody else does something? What if this happens? What if there's a lot of yeah. work that can come up? Um, and we're, we're trying to handle that through um, rank so that we can make sure if there's multiple people in a home, there will be somebody at a higher rank who is in charge of the final quality, the walkthrough with the client, and everything that happens in that house. So if somebody says, what if my work isn't, uh, or what if you know Sue's work isn't up to par and I get a bad review from this house, trust that your team captain is is going to check that. Chris, Robin's asking a question. I think maybe you kind of answered it with the DISC assessment. He's asking, would you want to hire leaders for solo model? And, you know, you certainly from a, a behavior standpoint, you know, you're, you're looking for, for somebody that's more analytical, I guess, and, and, and with, with lower social needs. Does that necessarily translate into leadership? I would say not not really. The people that we want to promote up are, are definitely the people that show leadership and they'll be in charge of the home and in charge of what happens. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that we hire leaders uh, as solos. 
Uh, we got a couple more questions on here too. Um, I, I'm not sure that you all the way answered this one, Chris. Chris. Um, Robin wanted to know if you changed your compensation plan. Um, because we're on commission, we didn't have to. Um, they're more efficient now and they make more money solo than they did in teams, which is a great way to sell it. Um, the problem with selling it that way is that it takes a while. And so when you say you're going to make more money, if on day two you're not making more money, they, they get upset. And, you know, it takes probably two to three months for them to get in the flow and the routine and used to what they're doing as a solo tag. And that's when they're able to make more money on our commission pay. So that, that was a struggle um, with them over the hump to where they started seeing their paychecks. And we more or less just had to say, hey, just just wait for it. I promise. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, Robin's got another question here. Um, how did your clients adjust to the change to solos? And did you have your clients sign a non-solicitation? Did you need to change anything in that arena? Was that even a concern? No, not, not really. Um, we, we deal with the issues as they arise. Um, it really, it's been almost a non-issue. It, it's, that was a big fear. And I got a lot of, of kickback from management staff saying, what are we going to do about all these clients are going to be upset. They're used to one thing. And most of our clients haven't been home anyway. So they don't know how many people are attending. I have heard from some people who make this transition there's there's a, a profile of a client that like works from their home for instance that values the you know getting a team in and out quickly because they just want them out of their home so they can go about their day where a solo means you've got somebody in your home for a longer period of time and their preference would be for a team yeah. so i guess that's kind of situational in terms of who your clients are and what their needs are yeah it is and that's we definitely ran into that problem uh, you know maybe 10 percent of our clients work from home and they prefer two cleaners and we found out who they were pretty quickly um and do you find a way where you've got two solo cleaners meeting at that home and doing it together that's also part of that four hour block um i don't know why it's four but whatever the reason four is just the magic number that we can schedule easily and efficiently throughout the day and um, make sure that homes are being cleaned efficiently. So if I have- I'm sorry, Chris, Schoolhouse Rocks has three is the magic number, but yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> well, for me, it's four. <laughs> um, but if I start a tech on a solo clean at 8.30, 9, 10, 11, they'll be done at 12.30, which begins our third arrival window. And then I can have two techs meet at that house or, if I have two techs do a two hour house and then two techs do a two hour house, I can send one of, I can split them up at the end of the day. Oh, I get you. Yeah. So just it's basically it, like two, four hour blocks type deal. Yeah. Yeah. The four okay. hour block I got you. Marlo's yeah. saying that, uh, yes, if they want someone in and out, we're not the right choice. But she says that's rare. And I believe that is true. I think for the most part, most most clients really don't care. Yeah, and you know we we try to sell them on the benefits. I, I feel like it's super easy to like to, to twist that one around. Well, you know, if you want somebody racing through your house, <laughs> like you know, it's an easy way to spin that. I mean, I feel like it's easy way to spin it the opposite way, too, but yeah. that that too fast or too slow thing. Um, so, Robin, uh, what I heard from Chris is he was always percentage, right, Chris? He didn't have to switch. Yeah. Right. And it has worked out. They, they do make more. Um, you know, the way that I measure efficiency is time scheduled to clean versus the time that you spend in any given day um, driving and whatever, and our efficiency is up, and that means the is up. Yeah. Chris, uh, Bridget makes a comment here, which I think is, 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 is very timely and something I think all of us have given some consideration to, that uh, she used COVID-19 as the excuse to do solos. Yeah. And, 
certainly that would be you yeah. know an opportune time to sell the concept that you're putting half you know you're you're reducing the risk of of sending somebody in your home that 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 might be uh, asymptomatic you're you're cutting the risk by fifty percent. Yeah, yeah, and the risk of transmitting it back to to our cleaners, right? I mean that's a big yeah. They've always sold it to them. Yeah. You're not you're not riding a car together. I mean, it's probably the the ultimate solution in terms of uh, dealing with with COVID. Yeah. And you know, I, I expect to be able to uh, to sell that for for a long time coming. You guys had it was a big deal in Colorado and Denver. I mean, you you were you had to legally you were forced to shut down, right? Yes. I'm and sorry. in the biggest way, up. I hope that's not a sore, sore point. <laughs> no, it definitely is, but it's okay. <laughs> I heard some time rumbling out of the seat. Yes, I'm sorry. Actually, tell a story, Chris, because your story is unique to anybody I know. Yeah, I mean, we we had the Department of Health um, come in and say we have to close down uh, multiple times too. There is, uh, you know, we we put in, we argued with them, and we went back and forth and. They weren't having it. Um, it was they literally uh, they they told you to shut down your door. door. Yes, yes. They they arrived at our office every single day until we were not operating. So uh, the first time they did that, what did you do? Nothing. <laughs> so the first time? Yeah, did you flip them off? I mean, what happened? Oh yeah, I asked them to leave. No, um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't there. Um, I just got a phone call later saying, hey, you know, we came by your office today. I, we know that you're operating. You can't be. And, and who, who who, was that? A health inspector. So, and they had them roving through Denver. Um, it wasn't anybody with like handcuffs, and a, you know, no. you know, they couldn't take you to jail. That was, that was the, uh, there, you know, there was threat of escalation and that did happen to quite a few business owners in, in the city. Um, I'm, there hasn't been a lot of, there was a lot of talk about it maybe a month ago. Um, but at this point they've, they've backed off, but they, they came in really fast and you know, they came in hard. You're shutting down period. Um, we, we negotiated a couple of different cleans that we were still allowed to do. Um, but it, it really wasn't much. Wow. Yeah, you're situation was much more extreme than almost everybody I heard. Most people got a letter or yeah. a call and then they could respond and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But yours was like, yeah. here's the hook. Bam, yeah. you're out. Sure. Business license were revoked over this. So there is just, there's no messing with it. Um, yeah, our clients weren't thrilled. I, I think we, we handled it really well. And, you know, you did very um very open about everything that was going on while we were doing it um we did have a lot of clients that found other services while we were down wow yeah that how long were you uh forced to be closed uh a month maybe a little bit more um Our i feel like it was closer to five weeks chris Five weeks sounds right. Five weeks sounds right. Yeah, um, it, it was a, it was a while. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Um, hey, Chris, have you um, run into this problem yet, where the cleaners get bored with doing the same homes all the time? Yeah. And um, that, those were the cleaners um, that you know. Like I said, we did lose a few, and I, I think um, without somebody to talk to all day, they they did get bored because yeah. we hired we hired very social people. And some of the issues that we have now, um, you know, I have one tech who just loves to talk and I'm, I'm getting complaints back from clients saying, hey, <laughs> I love them, but I have stuff to do, so. <laughs> if you're interviewing somebody and they happen to be particularly chatty, would that like be a disqualifying attribute? No, no, that that definitely wouldn't. And we have we have a few who are particularly chatty, but I, I think they, for the most part, chatty or not, as long as they want to listen to a podcast um, through the day, or um, they they're they're pretty okay with. It. Is that common for solos to uh, like have their? 
our, I don't know if there's a correlation, but our best our best ones seem seem to have headphones in, um, okay. and you know our quality has gone up. Um, last week, I think we closed at ninety six percent, which on a you know if that was a four point scale, maybe that would be like a three point eight something. Um, but yeah, they're they're doing a good job. So a question. And where, where was? Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. No, you. I was going to go in a different direction. So if that oh, okay. up. Yeah, I, I was curious what your quality was beforehand, Chris. Before you switched over. Maybe like a ninety-two percent, and it doesn't sound like. Oh. Like no, that does sound like a lot. Yeah, it's it's a big bump, um, and it's up and down as always. But it's it's yeah. Overall, we've had less complaints. Yeah. Uh, okay. Earlier, Robin, earlier, Robin was asking about client signing non-solicitation non agreements. Yeah. I think that's a good practice, regardless of how many people you you have in the team. But I've heard that, and, and logically, I guess you could see where maybe that would be a bigger concern with solos, where there's no real checks and balance, and yeah. I'm cleaning the home by myself anyway. What do I need Chris for? Yeah, and I, I, um, I've never had that issue um, in the past. You know, Alpine maids. Okay. Um, you just haven't been doing it long enough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It'll come up. Um, yeah, we haven't signed a non-solicit, but I think the the real um, what really makes a difference is just they know that we have a pulse on what's going on and. We have a good relationship with our clients. We engage them a lot. Um, we get a lot of email responses when we send stuff out to them, and just just keeping the clients close and the techs know that you know we're we're watching. Big Brother's watching. Um, we know what's going on. We have their stats. Um, I, I I think that that's where the real um, check comes in. It's just keeping a pulse on the staff. We do really hear that as one of the big fears, right? People are really uh, afraid of that. It's uh, one of the big holdouts. Um, uh, Robin has another question here. Well, it looks like Rob's definitely thinking about the solo model. He heard profitability. When are you going to you change? You know Robin, Tom. <laughs> right? It, it has um, our payrolls gone down because of mileage, because we're not paying them to drive from the office every day. Um, I was looking at our numbers earlier. I it's 50 to 75% less in mileage is, is what we're doing right now. How much? How much? 75% of what we were. So well, how much are you paying for mileage or how are you compensating? It's just 35 cents per mile driven. The actual work hours drop a material amount. I imagine too, because you're not paying for the drive back and forth from the office the revenue per clock hour goes up. I mean, from a metric standpoint, this is this is gold, isn't it? Yeah. Do you, I don't know. Did you ever pay overtime when you were doing teams? Yeah, we did. Probably uh, not so much now, right? Yeah, I haven't. I had maybe one or two techs over the past couple of months pay, that we had to pay overtime to. Nice. Yeah. I hate paying overtime. Ah, I don't want to be such a butt about it, but I hate it. Yeah. I mean, not being such a butt, Liz. I know. I mean, I want to pay it if they've earned it, but I don't want them to earn it. Just don't work overtime. Uh. Um, so Robin's talking about he might use a blended model in the future. So yeah, you're, would you consider your model to be a blended model? Definitely. Um, you know, at this point, we're probably about 60% true solo homes. Um, we were, uh, part of that's transitionary. Um, I've been talking to people about what size home should we be going after? And I used to really like big homes. And I realized now that I liked big homes because we were using teams, not necessarily because I like big homes. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, if I send two people to a 10,000 square foot house, they might be there for six hours and that's our whole day and that cuts out all the driving and 
all the stuff that comes with being solo anyway. Did you have- So you were just trying to turn two people into solos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to give in at some point. Did you find that the labor market got a little bit potential candidates for a hire got a little bit smaller because they needed to have their own car and be willing to drive it every day? Yeah, it's been an issue. Um, I should say that we have a company car and I'll probably purchase another one um, to deal with that because I don't want to lose a good tech over an unexpected car issue. And um, I can get them insured on it and they can take it as a loaner. I mean, obviously I'm going to have a problem with their road tripping in it. But as long as there's a very set amount, hey, my car had this happen, it's going to take me one week to get the money and then one week to fix it. Um, they can take that car for two weeks. But did you have people when you were doing teams that maybe didn't drive at all? Maybe they didn't even have a license? No, we never did that. Um, but it would happen. How? 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 What? Does everybody in Denver drive? That's just, we we always are finding people oh. without license, don't drive. Yeah, I mean, finding enough drivers is tough. Or yeah. maybe they have a license, but their history, driving history is such that we can't put them on our insurance. Sure, sure. Um, I guess that's still an issue. Even if they're driving their own car, if they've got a really bad driving record, you probably shouldn't have them driving on your behalf, right? No, definitely not. And I, I, you know, we have an additional insured policy. Um, and I think there are a couple of stipulations in there as far as you have know, somebody just got their license back. We, we probably still can't hire them. Um, but, you know, hiring's always been tough in Denver. Um, it's a good yeah. point. But I think that we really have. What's wrong with Denver? I never, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's tough everywhere, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, good point. Everybody has <laughs> that issue. Um, but I've just never wanted to make that exception because it's I did I did a long time ago and it always led to huge issues, right? You know, yeah. Sally always she's like she can never drive. This isn't fair. I have to drive her everywhere all of the time. And um, I just never really wanted to deal with that. So there's a psychology with its teams. It's like, well, I really don't want to drive because I don't want to have you know, other people in my car and I'm carrying twice as much stuff, equipment and product and so forth, where if I'm driving my car by myself, you know, it probably feels better. Yeah. And, and you know, it's always the team members fault that the car is trashed, of right? Course. Where all the trash has come from, why it's dirty. So if I'm driving in my car by myself, I can keep my car clean. I, mean, I, I get that too. Yeah, using the company car in this capacity has been great too. Our techs are really grateful when they're able to have it and take it home. I always get it back vacuumed and clean. They take it through the car wash. Uh, my tech that has it now like, hey. got an oil change. Wow, I need to come train my people on car. Well, Liz, you, you lost some bandwidth there. You're, you're breaking up a little bit. That's awesome, Chris. I love that. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, have you talked about Oh, did you guys lose me? A little bit. You, you broke back? up. I, Coming back. On my side, it looked like you guys broke up. Like I was fine. You sounded but like you, were you sounded like you just landed on the moon. <laughs> I know that. I know how that sounds. Uh, so, um, Robin has another good question here about um, signage on the text car. Have you thought about that, Chris? Are you going to do anything? I'm never going to do that. I don't. I don't like signage on my car. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't make them do that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's great advertising and that's something that I can't. <laughs> I know a lot of people that have them put the toppers on. Yeah. On their house, right. A pizza drivers. And I, I know a few cleaning companies actually that do that too. They're, they're, so, but that's not for gig. their uniforms, a huge advertisement already. It says everything. It has our phone number on it. But you can't see them when they're going down the road. No, but we we work in a, a lot of out areas. the window, Tom. Come on. <laughs> in a lot of areas. Traffic. Um, and so I, I think plenty of people see them getting out of the car and getting into the building 
Um, we have a little bonus system for them to give out cards to people, and it, it does pretty well. It does? Yeah. That's awesome. It does pretty well with a couple of texts. Okay, so you need to share that info in, in group tomorrow. Yeah, I will. Uh -huh. I'm writing myself a little note here. I uh, hear a little bit about that. Um, uh, okay, so Robert was asking about magnets. Like, you know to magnets, same thing as the toppers, right? Uh, you know, there, there's only so much we can ask. Um, we don't pay for laundry, and a lot of them just do it. Um, what we say is we'll, we'll exchange your microfiber and clean it for you, but I find that most people don't want to come to the office, so they, they do it at home. And if they did come to the office, would they be on the clock? Um, yes. Yeah, they would. So that would really not be great for you either. No, um, and so, so it I, sounds like they're getting enough money that it wouldn't really impact Chris's out outlay. It would just impact how much they were making per hour. Exactly, and it usually it evens out pretty well. We're having them come by. Some people come by once a week. Uh, some people come by every two weeks, and you know, just depending on the tech, some of them are trying to stretch it out as far as they possibly can um, to not have to come in and. Some people are trying to come in as much as possible and we're having to push them out. So earlier in the discussion, you, I guess, alluded to the possibility that your supervisors might play a bigger role in the logistics process in terms of replenishing your, 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 your cleaners. Yeah, that's the goal is to shift into um, as we achieve operational efficiencies from not or maybe not operational efficiencies, but uh, management efficiencies from from not having them come to the office every day and having to talk to them and distract from our work um, that our management will have more time to go out into the field and and talk to them there and drop off their supplies check a house maybe give them a little bit of help clean out a half bathroom and connect with them that way. well we're kind of pushing up against the uh, top of the hour here. One question real quick, because um, Leslie brought this up twice. Yeah. Um, and so we missed it the first time. We about do it every day, so we have to answer her question. Yeah, we do. Yes, do. We, do. Um, we do them weekly on Zoom at 5 p.m., which I'm so happy about because we used to do them at 740 in the morning, and I can't – I hate getting up in the morning. And – God, having to sit and talk to a, you know, speak to a, a bunch of people is is the worst. Um, so yeah, we we hold. Go on your bike at seven forty. Yeah, usually. You're still riding. Yeah, but I'm still waking up too. Yeah. <laughs> that can be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, well, can we fall off? <laughs> at least mostly for me, not everyone else on the road when I'm when I'm groggy late to my meeting. <laughs> so hey, hey, Tom. What time, sorry, your, what time is your Zoom meeting? 5 p.m. Huh. So does everybody, like, some people get done before 5, I assume, but they have to come back and be available at 5? Yeah, they do. Huh. But they don't have to come back, Tom, because they can do it anywhere. They can do it on their phone. Oh, if my day is over at 3, I might want to do something. Is it is it mandatory or if I got stuff That's going on? Um, every other meeting's mandatory. We record them and post them. Um, you know, so far we've been getting 80 plus percent turnout. Um, sometimes people will be walking their dog, but yeah, if you miss one one week, you just have to be at it the next week. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's only once a week. Okay. And if it's the same time every week, that makes it easier yeah. too. You need to do it every day at five o'clock. Once you get used to it, it's pretty easy, right? <laughs> Uh, hey Tom, did you get the email I sent you? I, I did. You want me to share the email? You want me to share the links in it? What you want me to do? Just that first link. So um, um, it's Ken Carfagno. I can't remember the name of the link. So I'm going to share a link here, you guys. If you're seriously looking at going um, solo, um, Ken Carfagno um, worked for a long time as a solo and he really perfected the solo cleaning model by doing it himself for years and earning a, I can't remember the exact number, so I don't want to misquote, but you might want to check into this information. We're probably going to have Ken on the Facebook Live um, in the coming weeks, 
but uh, might be might be a good play a good resource for you if you're looking to um, switch over seriously. Um, I, somebody I, said something. Oh, that link ahead, huh? that link is in the chat. So if you want it, it's right there. SoloCleaningSchool.com. Yeah. That's not too hard to remember. No, super easy. That's an easy one. Um, yeah. I, I was curious. Did you guys know what Robin meant by hat in the back window? I feel like I'm really missing something. You got a company yeah. hat, like a hat with your logo on it. You put the hat. Oh, I got you. I got you. All right. There, Chris. That seems easy enough. That's yeah, not it's, it's summer now and they're sweating. So that's that might be it. Yeah, that might be your thing right there. All right. Um, and Marlo said just one thing real quick, because I know we're running out of time, Tom. I'm sorry I keep doing this, but you know, Marlo's on every call too. So oh, we gotta oh, 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 we'll hook you up. What what's what she got? Well, she did also mention, and this is a, a consideration, that um um a lot of the her clients, the reason why they hire her is because they don't want a branded vehicle. And, and I know that this is like more in high end neighborhoods, et cetera. They don't feel like they want to be advertising your business for you. I, I used to have some people that would say that as well. So that's interesting. You, you know, you got to be thinking about that might be a, a marketing point and a sales point that yeah. you can use. Yeah. You know, so I just want to bring that up. because I'm like, ooh, that's, that's a good one right there. All right, Tom. Cleaning business today. If you haven't subscribed, couldn't be easier. Email, first name, last name. You get our newsletters, we keep you updated on late breaking, you know, things happening in the industry that that, that you want to know about. Um, right here, if you go to coronavirus downloads, and this is the link that I share every day almost because this is an unprecedented event that we're dealing with. Oh, wow, Tom. Good job. Woo, almost missed it. Woo. And we try to take everything that we have to help us make us through this uh, this crisis and this uh, unprecedented time and put that useful information all on this one page. And yesterday, for you guys who joined us, we had uh, a list of action items that uh, cleaning companies can do, or any company actually, but works well for cleaning companies to uh, action steps to, to help uh, address racism in a po positive way within their businesses, as well as kind of a contract. It's a, it's a document that you would use in team meetings within your organization to uh, kind of an icebreaker and kind of, kind of set the terms and the rules to make it easy to uh, have a meaningful discussion on the topic. So both of those are here on this link. You can download it and put it to good use. All right, Chris. Any last words of caution? If they're if people are going to switch from teams to solos, what are the things that they really need to like watch out for? Don't make these mistakes. Yeah. Um, know who's who's not going to work with the model. Um, they'll make it pretty clear. So just don't ignore those warning signs. They're going to need a lot more coaxing and massaging into this if you don't want to lose them. Um, they're going to need to know the benefits to them. Um, making timelines clear, like we were talking about with pay, it's not gonna, you're not going to see it for two or three months. And I didn't know that going into this. So trying to get everybody back on my team and trust me when I told them they would make more and they're not was really hard to see how. All right. So tell them that it's going to be probably two to three months, but then it's going to be consistent after that. Okay, that's really good. Yeah, that was that was huge um and you know just get ready for the um the onslaught of of communication phone calls that, that you're going to be getting in when when you do it um i'm sure there's maybe using um in-person meetings while you still have them to train people for what's coming as far as what do you do if you're locked out of a house what do you do if um there's a room with a dog in it and and so on and so forth. Just just really preparing them for, for everything. And then also having everything documented, um, all of your processes documented and having uh, somewhere to send everybody if they have questions has been really helpful. Awesome. Yeah. 
Chris, this is useful information. It's good. And if, if all you're doing is teams, I think most businesses could benefit by at least considering some, some hybrid models. You know, um, I know a lot of people are doing that. Um, mm -hmm. There you go. Um, especially in a uh, COVID-19 world, right? So uh, yeah. tomorrow, Bill Gelderman tomorrow, right? Yep, Bill. Bill Gelderman is one of the most interesting individuals you're ever going to meet. Truly, you want to see Bill tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Chris, thanks so much, man. Appreciate your help. We'll uh, do this again yeah. sometime here uh, real soon. Um, see you guys tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye y'all. -bye. Bye,